Today I'm going to teach you how to recompose any photograph in Photoshop, even if the area that you're recomposing doesn't exist. <laughs> yes. Okay. So this has happened to you. It's happened to me. It's happened to every photographer in the existence of photography. We are on location. We get kind of like this death spiral where we are shooting always in horizontal or always in vertical. And then we get back and we go and look at our pictures and we say to ourselves, man, I really wish I would have composed this thing differently. So we can crop. Yes, we know we can crop. But what happens when we crop and it doesn't make a good photo? Well, there's ways that we can compose our photographs in Photoshop that can still make a good photo using some of the content aware techniques in Photoshop. This image is actually the perfect example. It's a horizontal photograph that actually probably has a more compelling uh, shot in it if it is vertical. But if we go see for our crop tool and we crop in on this and we start to move this, one of the big problems that we have with this image is that there's no space up at the top. There's no breathing room up at the top. So even if we crop this image like this, it just forces this rock in front of us. It doesn't give us this dominant presence that this rock is. It would though, if there was more sky around it. So I'm gonna press command or control Z. What you need to do to make this work is actually turn the lock off if you have a background layer. We're actually gonna expand the canvas. And after we expand the canvas, we'll be able to recompose our shot. So I'm gonna to go to image canvas size. And then in the canvas size, the, what this is showing down here, change this button if it's not here to relative, uh, because that's gonna zero out our width and our height. So what we need to do is we need to add a certain amount of inches to the left and right hand side of our image and to the top and the bottom of our photograph. Typically when I'm recomposing these shots, I don't exactly know how many inches we're going to need to do on the top and bottom left and right. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to base it off of our height. So our height is 18 inches. I'm going to round that up to 20 and just divide that out by four. So that'll give me five inches on the outside and five inches uh, on the, the height and the width, right? And is that number arbitrary? Not necessarily. I'm just increasing this by one fourth of its size is where I was going with that thought process. Once I press OK, you'll actually see here that we might not be able to see because we are in full screen mode. So I'll press control space bar, right click and fit on screen. Now we have all of this area on the outside of our image. If we were to press command or control R and we bring our rulers in, that's giving us two and a half inches on the left, two and a half inches on the top two and a half inches on the right, two and a half inches on the bottom for a total of five inches all around the image. Again, that number is kind of arbitrary in a way. You don't necessarily need to go by that, but it just gives me enough space to see how much I want to crop this. So now when I press the crop tool and I start to crop in, I can move this over exactly where I want it to be. And if we look at our crop before, we said that it was a little bit too tight on our rock like this, right? Well, if it's too tight on the rock like that, I need to get more on the outside. So I'm going to move this out like this. And even if we have that little excess space up at the top, that's OK. That's actually exactly what we want. And I'll just move this right to about here and press enter. So now what I need to do in order to make this look better is I need to fill in the top. So what do I need to fill in the top with? Well, I need to fill in the top with data that's similar to the data in the rest of the image. And there's many ways that I can go about doing that. But one easy way, very simple way in the new version of Photoshop here in Photoshop CC 2021 is to use the content aware fill tool. In many times in the past and many critique sessions, I've shown how to use content aware fill the dialogue box, and then you have to do some other tricky things in order to make it work. We're not gonna worry about that now. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna press M for my marquee tool or select my marquee tool and just make a selection of the top of this area here, okay? And then once I've made a selection of the top of that area, I'm gonna make sure that it's not touching that foliage there. If it is, Alt or Option, and I'll just subtract that. Hold Alt and Option and subtract that from that selection. Okay. Now this selection part is really important because if I go to edit, I'll see content aware fill here. But if I don't have that selection there, if I go to edit, there's no content aware fill there. So we need to make that selection ahead of time. So I'm going to go back to where I was in the history palette there. Now I'll go to edit and then content aware fill. What I'm going to use here is I'm going to use a custom content aware fill. I'm not going to do auto. We'll see how well auto does. Essentially what auto is doing here is it's, it, it does actually look pretty good, but it's also using some of the data that is available um, in the rock itself to fill in that area up at the top. So I'm going to change this to custom. So when I change this to custom, I have the option here to uh, select the what 
or how much I should say of sky is going to be affecting the sky above. Now, if we look at the sky in this image, the sky down here is really uh, compressed. So the clouds are really compressed and they start to kind of increase in size as they come forward. So I want to make a selection of sky that is very similar to the area that I'm trying to fill in. So all I have to do here is just paint on and that's going to fill in that area up there and make a good selection of that area up there of what needs to be filled in. Now, if we look at our preview over here, our preview shows that it's done a really good job over here, but not such a good job on the left hand side. So let's grab from this side too. This just makes Photoshop get smarter and smarter about what it is that you want to fill in that area with. Now I'll make my brush a little bit smaller so that I can brush right along the edge here, right until we get up to the edge of that foliage. So that line there in our preview starts to get fixed and repaired as well. That actually looks pretty darn good. So I'm going to say apply and press OK. Now, if I press Command or Control D, look at how we've added that space up there to our image and we've recomposed our shot. A shot that shouldn't have been horizontal in the first place can now be vertical like it should be. And we don't lose that shot or have to try and go back to this location to get that shot again. We recomposed it in Photoshop. We expanded out our canvas and recomposed it in Photoshop. Now let's go ahead and zoom in here and make sure that we don't have any uh, of those line work. Then I see that there's a little bit of line here. If that happens, we just need to be a little bit clever about how we're going to fix that. And how I'm going to fix that is just going to be with the clone stamp tool. You can use almost any of your cleanup tools over here, but I like the clone stamp tool. So I'm going to make a new layer here and I'm just going to make sure that this says current and below. So I'm selecting from both the top and the bottom, and I'm just going to make a selection of over here by pressing alt or option, and then just fill this in. And I'm using a very soft edged brush here. One of the brushes that I've made for myself for my workflow so that it, it really combines really well and kind of makes almost this like a uh, textural type of pattern rather than uh, just a soft, big fuzzy brush. Okay. And then just fix up that line work there. Okay. And just blend in the best of both sides there. And then we'll, Zoom out and ta-da, it's fixed. Now this technique in this trick is not only for times where you need to expand the canvas, it's also for times like this image where I am in Second Beach, I take this shot, love this shot, but look at what happened. My horizon is definitely not center. If I press Command or Control R and I move down my ruler here, you can see that I've got a huge disparity here on where the straight line should be in this image. So if I were to try and fix this, if I go into the crop tool, let me go ahead and clear this out here. And then I'm going to go ahead and let's just go ahead and get out of the crop tool altogether so that when I go click on this again, I get the, the whole image there without having a crop ratio. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the straighten tool here. So with the straighten tool, I'm just going to click right here along the edge of this image all the way down to where the image should be straightened off of on that horizon. Now, what you're going to see before I even start this is that if I were to crop this, guess what? I lose the trees on the top of that beautiful C stack there. So I'm going to go ahead and move this up and I'm press and hold shift while I do it to maintain my aspect ratio. I don't really care too much if I go outside the boundaries here and get some of the uh, the uh, what do you call it? the the transparent area back there. I don't really care too much about that because there is a tool right here. This is if I click this and turn this on, this actually will tell you exactly in the tooltip. This is content aware, aware fill areas outside the original image so that once I commit to this and I press enter on this and say this is the crop that I want. Photoshop's going to assess all the places in this image that might be outside of the boundaries. So I'll press enter and see how well it does. Now we aren't using the content aware fill tool for this. We're letting content aware happen in the crop tool. It's basically content aware crop, right? And that did a pretty darn good job. So now if I go to my before, here's the before. OK, the tilted slanted uh, uh, image that we have here because my horizon line wasn't straight. I know yours aren't always straight either. So let's go ahead and see. Look, perfect. We've got that area filled in. The only thing we need to do now is zoom into this area and just kind of navigate around to see if we don't have any straight lines or any issues that might have come in the process of creating that. And it looks like it's all pretty darn good. Uh, just checking those boundaries and those borders to make sure that as I recompose that image with that crop, I don't get anything that looks like a repeated pattern or something like a broken line work there. So there you go. No more excuses. You can recompose any photograph in Photoshop using the content aware tools in there, whether you're using content aware fill with that uh, expansion of the canvas or using the content aware fill built right into the crop tool. The first method was probably a little bit more advanced. This second method here, a lot easier because it's built right into the crop tool. 
If you like this video and you want to watch another, go ahead and click this link right here. If you haven't done so already, please consider subscribing. I take very hard things in Photoshop and make them relatively simple, just like you saw in this video today. Thank you very much for taking the time to watch this. I do sincerely appreciate it.